you've probably stumbled across this game called Longvinder. Longvinder is kind of like Animal Crossing smushed with rust and merged into this beautiful combination which is cute and fun and horrifying at the same time. But the PvP aspect of it is quite brutal and if you don't know how to survive in the game, well, you're gonna have a hard time. And so today I've combined 10 tips to help you survive in Longvinder. Alright, the first tip I want to show you on this list is going to be this website that is a map of the entire world, locations, and everything in between to help you understand where everything is on the map. Let's go ahead and check it out. As you can see here, we have the map of the entire, this is the whole entire map. It's got the ports, you can see where any of the ports are. So if you're playing with your friends, and let's say you're at Bioman's Outpost and they, are, they spawned at Tim's Outpost, you'll know exactly where you're on the map. There's also feathers, so it shows all the locations of all the different feathers in the game. It also shows all the location of all the fish in the game, all the fishing spots. It also shows all the locations of all the plants in the game. It shows all the locations of shops, even the mysterious ones as well. And lastly, it shows all of the loot areas and monuments in the world. Next up, I wanted to show you that on Long Venter, when you actually play the game, there are two different types of servers you can play on. Obviously, this game is PvP based, so you're going to be fighting other players. But if you just start out on this game, it's going to be quite brutal. You're trying to grasp the understanding of the survival aspect, and you're top of that getting shot upon by everybody. So it can be a really hard balance. If you want to just dive into it, you can, obviously, but as you can see here, there are PvE servers and PvP servers, so you can kind of get yourself adjusted in the world of Lung Venter, then you can dive into PvP. Next up on the list, we have Stamina, Health, and Hunger. At the bottom of the screen right here, you see these electrical bolts, and that is going to be all of that combined. The game makes it really simple by just simply combining all of it into one, and all you have to do is just eat food and it'll restore your stamina and health. As long as you don't go below zero, you won't die. Now, a question may be, where would you set up a base? And uh, realistically, this is a survival game. You could just throw your tent down and just start wherever you want. I like to put my own base right beside a station or looting area because every 10 minutes the crates come back and you want to jump right into them so you can actually get the loot before anybody else does because if you are let's say way across the map not by any of the looting stations by the time you get to them they'll be looted as you can see here this one's already looted a side note to that as well if you do go ahead and build your base near one of these looting stations and you are in a pvp server Watch out for raiders because they will be hot zones for players because they're obviously going to be running pie and trying to get the loot as well. Next up, we have the Copendium. Now, the Copendium is something that I think everyone needs to focus on. The fish, feathers, and plants. Now, all of these have the ability to unlock something, whether they may be secret locations or going to the main station, the main trader station, and unlocking turrets and other goodies. Next up is going to be regions. Now, currently in the game, there are only three regions and specifically the main region I want to talk about is going to be the winter biome. The winter biome is pretty harsh, but it is rewarding. There is a ton of stuff in the winter biome that you can go and gather. And when you're in it, your stamina will be going down quite fast. So if you do not have a sauna or tons of hot packs or food, you will be going down on your stamina very, very quickly. Next up is going to be looting. Obviously, there are tons of locations on the map I provided that you can see where to go. And every 10 minutes, as I said earlier, they respawn their crates. As you can see here, if we waited 10 minutes, this will respawn and you can get more to it. The looting from the crates are all randomized. It's random goodies you'll find in them. Four base layouts once you get your tent going here. It's fairly simple. They actually tell you right here the placeable statuses in the house area. As you can see right here, you can figure out where you need to be. When you place down your tent, you'll have a radius of how far you can build within that. And if you're in multiplayer, your friend can build right alongside your radius and then you can get into a party and then you can build in that radius. Basically, you can make a massive base just by putting them out and spacing them out instead of just putting them right beside each other. Next up I want to talk about is vendors. You can actually get your own vending machine and put it outside your base 
and it'll look like something like this and look at what people have obviously this one's red as you can see so it actually is empty right now but there are also vending machines at sports and at the main place and one of the biggest things which you'll have to find out on your own is most of these places will always have different prices based on how the item is sometimes it'll go up sometimes it'll go down and you may be able to get something for a little bit cheaper here than at another outpost that being said there are vending machines at the sergeant lake house that are going to be locked until you actually get your compendium unlocked which is what i mentioned earlier and there's some actual good stuff here that you can get there are also safe locations that are like secret locations that you can find that you can unlock just by having a certain amount of your copenium done or having all of your copenium done you can also go to these j stations right here and hit buy and you can see what other people have sold here and you can see what they have here sometimes you can find some stuff that you can actually craft and turn into another item that can be sold for more and sell that and make way much more money than going out and trying to get it yourself. And last but not least is going to be quests. Quests are something in the game designed to kind of, I guess, help push the player along a little bit, kind of give starting people a little bit more of an idea about the game. I really do like it. It gives you rewards like this one, the starting quest, and I need to catch like six more fish and then I can get a map and I get a cake. Woo, cake, but yeah. There are also quests scattered around the world, like here, there are quests from these vending machines here from, from the farming basics, farming support funds, and master farming. Obviously, you get different rewards based on what you do, and it's honestly worth it in my opinion. And those are just 10 tips to help you survive in Long Vendor. I hope this video helped you, and if it did, do consider hitting that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.